السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو آر فیس بک اینڈ یوٹیوب چینل میڈیسن بائی پروفیسر ڈاکٹر طارق وسیم آئی ہیو سلیکٹڈ دی موسٹ امپورٹنٹ کمپوننٹ آف میکنگ اے ڈائگنوسس اے گڈ ہسٹری آلویز از دی فاؤنڈیشن آف دی ڈائگنوسس یٹ دس امپورٹنٹ کمپوننٹ آف میڈیکل ٹیچنگ از لیفٹ ود دی جونیئر موسٹ ممبر آف دی ٹیم ویر ایز اٹ شوڈ بی uh vice versa that the senior most person should uh, coach and guide how to extract information from your patient and from the narration how do you build a diagnosis it's my very favorite quote from sir william mosler who is probably the father of the modern medicine that always listen to the patients they might be telling you the diagnosis and this holds true even in an era of uh, artificial intelligence and the new gadgets coming into medicine or practice of medicine practicing medicine is uh, an art an art of communication communication with your patient with their relatives your colleagues your consultants and even healthcare authorities for your uh, funding and uh, all the changes you want to bring into the system or into the policies we have to learn how to record describe and communicate and report your observations a physician is always a good observer and a good observer makes good physicians while recording your uh, findings we don't have to miss very say important findings and we don't have to mess up with the unnecessary details which may not be relevant to the problem which we are going to describe or going to narrate why we take history while taking history you have to be always keeping in mind that you want to know what is happening to your patient and why it is happening it is to make a diagnosis and diagnosis is to in a greek it means see through taking a history with uh, a meaningful uh, clinical evaluation is important a good history as i said is foundation of a good or appropriate diagnosis it should give you an idea of a probable differential diagnosis from the very beginning and systematically if you take the history uh, and especially if you look into the uh, signs and symptoms and confirm them on your examinations and then it would guide you to the relevant investigations that is very important particularly working in uh, low and middle income countries like pakistan where resources has to be used carefully most of the expenditure is by the patient himself so unnecessary investigations in the name of uh, um, say differential diagnosis of uh, irrelevant uh, diseases may be putting a lot of burden on your patient's pockets we start with this that uh, we imagine that uh, you are a, say junior house officer or uh, maybe you take on a third year student who has uh, come for the, to the ward for the first time and your registrar asks you to have a history of a patient who is 55 year old male who was uh, admitted last night with difficulty in breathing for last 3 days now from the very beginning of this main uh, say introduction to the patient presenting complaint the mind should start working on that what is likely to be wrong with this patient and we are to talk about a dyspnea in a patient who is 55 year of age so how do you start so getting started is that you go to your patient bedside or if is in your in this your chamber uh, approach them very sympathetically it's always nice to greet them saying hello or assalamu alaikum or whatever the custom is you must introduce yourself and your position in the healthcare team and most of the time junior students or uh, doctors are very shy of going to the patients or telling them that they are medical students and taking a history 
uh, and uh, they feel that they would be um, dealt with uh, say a very inexperienced person so that's why that it's uh, always better in the beginning that you introduce uh, with a narration that uh, i am from the medical team and i have been assigned to get a detailed description of the disease by my consultant and we'll together discuss your case and that of course would give uh, or you can gain the confidence of your uh, patient then there has to be a little bit of a uh, demographic data in the form of uh, that uh, this uh, but we call it socio demographic data that you note your patient's name where they come from their age gender i mean biologic gender not the gender assigned nowadays that you will call he a she or she a he uh, race and nationality uh, does uh, have bearing on certain diseases marital status uh, who is uh, next of kin responsible for uh, uh, some legal requirement if they arise uh, occupation of the patient may have a bearing on his disease and similarly when this history was uh, taken and when our patient presented uh, to the emergency or opd or where next is your after your demographic uh, or introductory things is that you have a data and this data is set of things uh, which help you in make a diagnosis data first of all we have to have a certain the source of that data whether uh, it was patient himself who described it was a relative of him or it was a friend or sometime in case of emergencies it's the ambulance staff which has brought the patient from a roadside so this source uh, and uh, authenticity of that data uh, is, is is a matter of concern then you note down that uh, what are the reason for bringing to hospital or to the opd clinic or services we note down how the things evolved in over last few days regarding his illness we also need to know that does he have a, any previous illness which might have a bearing on his uh, disease now social and personal history uh, is important we also want to know that he may not be having some uh, family history of a known disease or inheritable disease and uh, in women it's always uh, good to know the gynecological and menstrual history in children we note down their development and milestones and of course we also want to know what kind of a treatment patient has received for the current problem or he may be on medication for some illness which he always is harboring with this information uh, or a set of information which are uh, we are going to unfold uh, in a few minutes we start with uh, listing the complaints with which patient has come to hospital so these are the called initial complaints or chief complaints or presenting complaints whatever you name them the first thing is that you note why he is in hospital today or what was the reason for this hospitalization admission or visit to a doctor we have to list some major reasons or complaints or symptoms which we has uh, come with we have to be very brief uh, with these presentations selecting one to four words and arrange them in an order in which they appeared the first symptom first to come would be first to be listed on top so managing initial complaint list for our 55 year old patient we charted down that he has a fever for last 7 days he has been complaining pain on right side of his chest on for the last 5 days he is also having a dry cough and then he is feeling short of breath or difficulty in breathing for last 3 days now with this set of uh, symptoms we start with what is happening to this patient he is febrile he has right side chest pain he has uh, dry cough and breathlessness and then why it is happening so what is happening to the patient and why it is happening is the questions to be 
look for in further interview with your patient. As I said, your mind should start working on what is wrong with my patient, what can be the reason for his smile. Now, once you have uh, charted down a list of presenting complaints, a 55-year-old male who has presented with the febrile illness, it is a common with the right sided chest pain, cough, difficulty in breathing, there are possibilities. Fever may be a manifestation of a low respiratory tract infection or a community acquired pneumonia. His chest pain can be pleuritic in origin, but a 55-year-old male can have other reason for chest pain as well. And of course, the nature, character and type of pain would help us in differentiating whether it is a respiratory or cardiac or a musculoskeletal type of a chest pain. His cough can be a manifestation of a bronchitis or a low respiratory infection, but he may also have maybe a smoker and may also have uh, previous uh, lung disease so we need to know a little bit about cough and its characters as well and uh, he may also be already suffering from some an underlying cardiac or respiratory disease which may be a reason for his breathlessness or worse negative that means that we need to know some more about this patient and some more is then history of the presenting complaints and as we said and information about his occupation, information about his previous illness or past illness, hospitalization, all this could be dealt one by one. So we start with when was the patient well or when uh, he has this uh, presentation started or when he was well prior to this presentation. It may be a new complaint chest pain or it may be continuation or aggravation of a previously ongoing ongoing process we have to elaborate these chief chief, chief complaints in a little bit of details so we'll just uh, try to proceed how we have to uh, move forward ask for the sequential account of the events uh, from the onset of the symptoms to the present state Allow him to elaborate it in his own words. Don't put your words into his mouth. He would be telling you, as I said, in Sir William Osler's words, telling you the diagnosis. But it's you who have to pick up from his description that what can be the reason or pathology leading on to those symptoms. Be careful not to put uh, any leading questions uh, which usually mm, suggesting that you are putting some diagnosis into his uh, say that is onto your mind and you want to mm, have a say, confirmation by just asking the leading question from that very patient. The history of presenting complaint is uh, usually uh, listed in the form of uh, that each symptom is to be taken one by one. We note down how it had started, how, what was the mode of onset, uh, whether it was sudden or gradually developing, how it progressed, for how long the symptom has been there, has it been there continuously, continuously or is intermittent, how severe it is, how what uh, disturbs the daily activity of uh, your patient, uh, are there any relieving or aggravating factors for that very symptoms, and uh, there are uh, some other associated symptoms with that complaint or uh, there is uh, some non-specific uh, com say complements of that uh, complaint and then you go for some kind of a systemic review systemic review means that the patient has fever cough and uh, sputum but he may also have uh, say some difficulty in urination because of an enlarged prostate or he may have uh, say uh, some rash developing which he think is not significant but may have been bearing on the diagnosis so you uh, one by one you ask for other symptoms related to other systems as well and of course uh, the third component of a history of presenting illnesses has there been any treatment uh, say received for this current problem and if so uh, it may have some positive or negative bearing uh, onto this uh, uh, current status. 
So this patient has fever. Fever is uh, always analyzed and especially when the fever is uh, of a longer duration. Our patient has just three days fever and it looks like an acute illness. But key question to be asked in a patient uh, with fever, particularly when the fever is more than three weeks of duration. And we usually label that as uh, like paraxia or fever of unknown region. We have to note the pattern of the fever, whether it's continuous, intermittent, varies with the day or um, morning and evening. Is it a spiking or does it have a remittent uh, character that it remits and then comes again? The common causes of fever are usually either infections or autoimmune diseases or uh, occult malignancies. So some relevant questions like uh, contact or exposure, travel, uh, the symptoms like of someone family in the family having uh, similar symptoms uh, may suggest towards uh, communicable disease. Uh, autoimmune disease are suggested by other the known patients of the disease or their symptom of connective disorders like associated joint pain, skin manifestation, swellings, or occult malignancy may be suspected in patient with unexplained weight loss, fatigue or sometimes there may be a known case of already malignancy. So, or they may have noticed some lumps or bumps in their body, which point towards, uh, say, um, an occult malignancy. Similarly, uh, the pain, again, uh, there is a very good mnemonics in the name of uh, old cards that uh, the onset of pain, whether it is abrupt or gradual, where it is located, it's in the chest, arm, abdomen, head. How long the pain has been there for a few hours, has been there for days or months. What is the character of that pain? It is an aching. There are many adjectives to be pain. Aching pain or burning after meals or a stabbing like, a, um, say, like, or a piercing pain. Or, so these are various adjectives which point sometimes helps in making a diagnosis. A aching pain may be a muscular, a burning pain uh, in the epigastrium may be, uh, say, acepeptic disease or burning in the feet, maybe uh, neuropathy. We also want to note the aggravating or alleviating factors like movement make it worse, it get worse on walking or running or eating. Uh, radiation or referral, uh, whether the pain, where does the pain spreads, uh, pain of sciatica or lower lumbar, uh, say, uh, lumbar sacral uh, nerve root compression may radiate to the uh, spread to the leg. Similarly, uh, if it's referred to a certain part like a pain uh, of appendicitis first in the umbilical region, but then it is referred to the right iliac fossa, uh, shift to right iliac fossa. The, the initial pain, umbilical pain, may be a referred pain. Uh, timing, uh, whether it's pain been there constantly there or comes and goes or is worse at some uh, time of the day or other in the morning and evening. And you always want to know how severe is uh, this pain. So this old cards, uh, say mnemonics, helps you in uh, noting about the information about pain. Cough, uh, again, uh, from its onset and duration and frequency, that uh, how often does it occur? It's uh, always good to know that the cough is just a dry cough or it is accompanied by production of some sputum as well. And if there is a sputum, this sputum, uh, its amount, its color, its smell, uh, whether it is associated with some, say, blood tinging or hemoptysis, and if so, how much amount a patient uh, spits out and uh, its frequency. There are uh, whether there are associated phenomena like chest discomfort, wheezing, or sore throat, and other factors that sometimes the cough may be worse in the morning. Some may be some patient may have a cough more after the, after their meals with their, um, say reflux uh, esophagitis or uh, during other activity, and sometimes it may be just a manifestation of an uh, bronchial asthma or allergic bronchitis. So knowing about their allergies is always helpful in reaching a diagnosis. Dyspnea or uh, difficulty in breathing or breathlessness or getting short of breath, there are so many adjectives used by the patients. Again, 
how did it start and for how long it has been there. The sudden onset of dyspnea usually points toward either anaphylaxis, maybe some uh, choking or foreign body inhalation. Pulmonary embolus dyspnea can be very acute onset. A pulmonary edema may develop uh, uh, after an arrhythmia or an acute MI within few minutes to hours. A pneumothorax uh, or air coming around the lung uh, may be a reason for a very acute onset uh, dyspnea and sometimes acute severe asthma can also present uh, like an acute dyspnea. But when the dyspnea is progressive, chronic, been there for uh, weeks or days, then you think of COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you think of post-infective fibrosis, ILD, heart failure, valvular diseases. Now this, uh, uh, say, dissecting or say, further uh, elaborating the symptoms would help you in possibly thinking or making a differential diagnosis. Uh, its relationship with activity, whether it is on exertion or rest, and of course, uh, we grade them into grade one to four based on a dyspnea, worse dyspnea, on, uh, which is in even in the bed or um, in the chair or sitting position, and the mild dyspnea on a heavy exertional activity. It may be associated with cough, or sputum or hemoptosis pointing it towards a uh, respiratory region dyspnea, whereas otherwise it could be a cardiac or maybe sometimes anemia alone can be reason for uh, feeling breath dyspnea. Time of occurrence uh, is important. Early morning dip uh, in, uh, say, asthmatic is known. Similarly, at workplace, uh, if dyspnea happens, there may be something. Uh, at the workplace or some exposure to some uh, say pathogens or allergens over there which may be reason for dyspnea. Uh, the worsening of dyspnea in certain position uh, helps you in making diagnosis. Patient on lying flat getting dyspnea which we call it orthopnea usually a sign of heart failure. Let, uh, dyspnea getting worse on lying to one side may be as a result of a pleural effusion or maybe as a result of a, a unilateral lung pathology. Uh, differentiating between a cardiac and respiratory dyspnea is always uh, important. The respiratory dyspnea, as we already mentioned, uh, the cuff is prominent feature, sputum is there and usually thick. There may be some hemoptysis and if they're so, it would be bright red in color. Uh, there is a morning dip in asthma and uh, fever may, may, may or may not be there. Uh, if it is infective origin fever may be there. Uh, occupational exposure is important and uh, history of uh, wheezing and uh, chest pain is usually uh, there. Chest pain is uh, another, not very common feature of a primary respiratory dyspnea but wheezing may be. On the opposite, the cardiac dyspnea cough is not a prominent feature. Sputum if there is usually thin, frothy, uh, Often no hemoptysis, but sometimes uh, you may have a pinkish frothy sputum in pulmonary edema as well. Orthopnea and P and D are more prominent feature of a cardiac dyspnea. Uh, fever generally is not there, but sometimes can be a precipitating feature of a worsening of a heart failure. Uh, the occupational history usually is not that important. Wheezing generally is absent, but sometimes uh, bronchial edema as a result of uh, back pressure heart failure can give rise to wheeze. That's why we called it as a cardiac asthma sometime as well. Chest pain, uh, particularly in patient with ischemic heart disease or pericardial disease may be there along with this. Past history is important that it may be the, tell you that there may be earlier symptom of the present condition. Uh, it may, you may also ask about uh, already a known uh, history of diabetes, hypertension, congestive uh, coronary heart disease or tuberculosis, which may have uh, bearing on the current symptoms. Uh, circumstances which have caused or contributed to the development of the present risk, like I said, a heart, stable heart failure patient getting a chest infection and getting an uh, acute precipitation or a COPD patient getting an acute exhibition. So this uh, is good to know that patient already had a known documented coronary artery disease or chronic obstructive ear disease or is a smoker. 
Uh, we have to note all previous illnesses or accidents. So we have to note down admission to hospital and uh, any surgical operations that are conducted, which may be a reason for his current admission. He may have formed some adhesions as a result of previous surgery, resulting in intestinal obstruction now. Uh, blood transfusion is always important uh, from the point of view of uh, communication of um, HIV or uh, HCV or hepatitis C. Treatment history and allergies must be noted. Ask about treatment received for the current problem and when what medication he has uh, been on previously. And uh, also note down any allergies like uh, sulfur drugs or penicillin, wheat, egg or uh, sometimes. Uh, the Chinese salt patients sometimes are allergic to that. Noting down that uh, what occupation they have because they may be this illness may be related to exposure to certain say pollutants over there. Tobacco alcohol history is always important from both the respiratory as well as cardiac or liver point of view. Uh, regular, regularity of meals and uh, sleeping time is important. Uh, whether patient has a sanitary lifestyle or does have uh, some exercise uh, routinely. Uh, visits abroad are important, particularly the, the, the this rapid uh, say air transport has led on to. We recently had this COVID-19 pandemic uh, spreading beyond borders to. Um, as a result of uh, say communicable disease. The housing conditions are uh, the access to clean water and access to uh, say uh, good hygienic condition is always important from a communicable uh, diseases point of view. Marital status and sexual activity uh, has to be uh, inquired and questioned. And uh, of course, uh, their beliefs and religion uh, is important from certain aspects. Uh, noting down their resources and sources and uh, the cost of medicine which they would have to bear, uh, that's important. In women, it always good to go for gynecological and obstetric history. When did they start menarche, menstrual cycles, regular not duration amount? Childbirth, whether because of uh, as was it a spontaneous vaginal delivery or C-section, uh, abortion, stillbirths. We note down the family history and uh, any history of hereditary disease in the family is to be noted down. Any deaths in the family or any any cause of those deaths should be uh, documented. Uh, cousin marriages uh, and uh, the diseases uh, say inherited as a result of those cousin marriages, particularly the X-linked uh, disorders or uh, say autosomal uh, dominant disorders may be, may be say hereditary basis. And uh, also note down history of uh, chronic disease in the family like hypertension, diabetes or tuberculosis. Some of them may be communicated or communicable and some of them maybe as a result of it sharing the same genes and sometimes maybe sharing the same environment. It's good to make a family tree or a pedigree where you note down parents, siblings, offspring and spouse and spouse uh, cousin of course would share the same hereditary material but if it is uh, otherwise it's more important from the communicable end. Making a chart like this where you have an index patient, his parent, parent is diabetic, he himself is, has diabetes, ischemic heart disease, sister is hypertensive, and noting down their, uh, say, uh, children is always help us in making, linking the, uh, this disease to any heritable pattern. The diagnosis is a summary of all this relevant data of uh, presenting and history of present illness and uh, present past history, family history. It then is augmented with a focused physical examination. And uh, based on that, you make uh, some set of a differential diagnosis or a provisional diagnosis. And then, if needed, go for some laboratory investigations to confirm your diagnosis, like 
in our patient we are thinking of a community acquired pneumonia it would be good to have uh, say a chest x-ray a sputum examination and blood and uh, sputum cultures to confirm the diagnosis and start the appropriate treatment in the end i would say medicine is learned at the bedside and not in the classroom it's always going to your patients learning the art of interviewing le learning the art of uh, uh, better communication and then extracting the relevant information from them and of course you then the next step is that using the right technique to examine the patients i hope uh, that uh, this uh, introduction to a uh, history taking uh, of course it's uh, for a very very uh, junior member of the healthcare team but in fact i would say it is relevant to the medical students or third year medical students or the the new house officers but it should be practiced from there and then and you always keep on refining your techniques what questions and how those questions have to be asked from the patients without annoying him without uh, say embarrassing him or embarrassing yourself so go to your patients learn how to talk to them get their confidence and believe me this foundation of uh, history and uh, the initial interviewing and of course the the rapport you build your with your patient helps you in becoming a good physician or a good doctor thank you and uh, we'll start come up with in the next how to think a diagnosis thank you for watching and if you like it uh, you do say recommend it to your uh, colleagues friends students so, uh, whoever think you think is uh, likely to benefit